Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, episode 23 of For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about some of these spiritual successors to Paragon. This week, we've got the news and updates, as always, followed by poll results. And then Tech Time without Ruba again is just going to be with me. Uh, we're going to start a new series with Tech Time. Get a little bit more into that later. But um, And then after that, we've got uh, our topic of discussion, which is how much should the hero kits change, if at all. And then we got the community suggestions, which was some mount ideas. And then our community spotlight, which was tiger.exe. Sorry that this one is a little bit late. It's a day late. Uh, Mandy had to go get her butthole bleached. Speaking of Mandy, my beautiful co-host is joining me as always. <laughs> How you doing, Mandy? Is there no such thing as confidentiality anymore? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I'm doing great. Got a fresh butthole, so you know, life's good. <laughs> There's nothing like a fresh butthole to start off your week. <laughs> why do I go along with your I don't shit? know why you why? go along with it, because now people are totally going to think that's why we I had know. the delay. I know. Day. But also uh. introducing... Uh, a special guest, uh, Moody Blues. He's a great dude. He's, you know, he, you always see him in the comments, and uh, he, he introduced me to a new thing, which is like a um, a new sort of overthrow Paragon, which is it's called Paragon Demo. It's just like a an A RAM. So very thankful for that. But uh, Moody Blues, how you doing, man? Doing very good. Thank you guys for having me. I'm doing yeah. great, you guys. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, well, thank you guys. Tell us a little bit about your experience with Paragon and who your favorite hero was. Um, I started playing Paragon when it was an alpha. My favorite hero is Shimbi, offlane. Yeah, it's like Paragon. Uh, everything up to V42. Yeah. <laughs> Just like everybody else. No, a lot of people like it. A lot of people crashing. And, uh, so let's roll right into the news and updates. Uh, start off with meta buff and core. Uh, I started targeting the questions a little more at them. I usually just say, like, hey, man, you got any updates? This time I was like, hey. How far are you towards completion? They they do say that they're um, well well over fifty percent complete towards the alpha release. Um, there was a little bit of you know some people would in, within MetaBuff would say that they're further along. Some people would say that they're not as far. But everybody agrees that they're well over fifty percent towards completion. So that's great news for everybody out there. And then uh, they said that there will be some big updates towards the end of the month. So keep an eye on their Discord, YouTube, all that social media. And um, they also confirmed that the map will change based on feedback from the latest round of map testing. So cool stuff all around. Moody, what do you think? Um, I'm just waiting for a gameplay trailer. I want to see if it's mm. uh, I want to see if it's a thing. <laughs> I <wanna see> if <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> no, no offense. No, yeah, I'm just waiting to see a gameplay trailer, just like everybody else. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you guys think about um, that the map is going to have some changes? Was there stuff that you guys wanted to see changed, or are you were you happy with it? Yeah, I brought um, up I just, quite a few things. Um, Moody, go ahead. Everybody's um, already heard what from, I have uh, to say. Yeah, everything from what uh, Bredick said. I, it, it was one of Bredick's videos. I think it was his stream. Uh, my concerns were, because I'm a jungler too also. So my concern was how wide the lanes were. Mm. Uh, we talked about this, how wide the lanes were and how big the structures were. Mm -hmm. Other than that, though, but from what I heard is uh, they were going to fix that or strengthen it smaller, make it a little smaller. Yeah, they, they already did apply a few changes. Um, one of the things was the prime dunk pit. Pit. They moved that. They scooched that in a little bit further so that the uh, the duo lane was a uh, wasn't as wide as it mm -hmm. was originally. So yeah. that's one of the things they changed. Yeah, the mid lane was huge. The mid lane was super wide. Mid lane was very wide, yeah. That was <laughs> definitely. Um, I had kind of in the beginning thought that the wide lanes were super cool. I really liked them. Um, and then after hearing some things that different uh, streamers were pointing out, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they they might be uh, just a tit bit too wide. So yep. You don't want to give them too narrow, then Narbash won't be able to fit down the lane. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Moving on to Omega Studios and Predecessor. Again, I drilled down on them. I targeted them. Um, I asked them how many uh, heroes they have complete towards the alpha. You know, they had to kind of redo everything since they released their alpha. And, you know, once the alpha comes back, you know, that's going to def depend a lot on how far along they are. And what they had for me is they said Severog and Fing Mao are complete, like 100%. They're complete. Uh, Murdoch is about halfway there. So that leaves Gadget and um, Muriel mm -hmm. for completion. So, And they are almost done fully implementing the, the GAS, the gameplay ability system. Uh, we covered that in episode 20 of in, uh, in Tech Time. So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. So 
What are you guys' thoughts on Predecessor and their, uh... Man, um, I... I thought it looked great. Uh, my only concern was Murdoch's basic attacks mm -hmm. and Gadget's uh, sticky mine. Kind of felt a little off. But yeah, other than that, it looked good. It feels good to see Legacy back. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. To get... Yeah, I'm. Oh man, Fringe did just mwah, with that uh, yeah. with that map. It was really nice. Um, I'm excited to get my hands on it again. I want to experience it with that lag, uh, the uh, input lag gone. Um, that was definitely my biggest complaint and really hindered my experience with it. So um, I'm excited to get my hands back on it and see see what kind of finishing touches they they put on it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Gadget's mind, Sticky Mind, they seem kind of small, right? They're like, they're yeah, like, they just, they're they like that a big, off. but they like, they seem about that big in the, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, then uh, Murdoch's, uh, Murdoch's basics kind of felt a little weird, too. Yeah, well, every, everybody's basics felt a little everybody. weird. Oh, really? The yeah, input lag. Wonky. But uh, they, they have completely fixed that input lag. They're, um, that's that's oh, going to really? be a okay. thing of the past. So thank yeah. God for that. That's oh, part yeah. of what the, uh, the gameplay ability system is all about. Mm -hmm. And then Smokey did say that they are going to start streaming a lot more again. And uh, you may have noticed that if you follow Smokey's Twitch channel, he has been streaming the development of the game once again. So rejoice if that is something that you are into. And moving on to Ethereal. Uh, Ethereal is going to be at Colossal Con in Sandusky, Ohio, May 30th through June 2nd. It's like a little local con that's going to be pretty cool. Um, cool beans for them. They're, they're going to be represented by UG Tricolo is that our audio and voice director and uh they released some voice assets for malware which are pretty damn cool i'll go ahead and play them right now let me pa 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 boom there we go let's put your immune system into the test once i'm in your system it's only a matter of time in the system. Virus installed. You were dead the moment my optics scanned you. And there we go. Unfortunately, um, the real reason that we had to delay it was because I didn't record any of the show when we were doing it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's unfortunate because... The, the the look on both Moody and Mandy's face for those voice lines was <laughs> <Aww>. priceless. <laughs> it was so good, the reaction. It was, yeah, um, it was very cool to hear those yeah. for the first time. It was like, uh, it was wicked. I liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, uh, some people were kind of complaining that they sound a little glitchy. I think they're supposed to because malware is supposed to be like a sentient computer yeah, virus. like a virus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes perfect I thought, sense. I thought it sounded good, yeah. Yeah. That's what he's talking I about. Fit infecting yeah. you with a virus and all that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah i think it's so cool that they're gonna be at this uh colossal con that's i mean i'm not anywhere near the area i so wish i was because i love going to local cons like that and i think they're a great way to uh build a bigger audience and build hype with the audience you already have um like i said i love going to local cons so if i was going to one of my local ones and one of these games was going to be there i would be so excited to like meet some of the developers or the team face to face. Like, I just think that's so cool. And I just really, I want you guys to come to Florida, come to Florida. We have cons <laughs> all the time. So get your booties down here. It's nice and warm. So <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, um, I was checking out the, the list that had like uh, some musical guests that I didn't recognize because I don't know current music. And then I uh, <laughs> Looked like some low key pro wrestling, and then, but they had a, uh, they have quite a few voice actors there for different anime. Uh, one of the voice actors they had, um, she did, she did Steins Gate, uh, Tackle and Titan, Trigun, I, I can't even think of Fairy Tale, just all sorts Dang. of anime. She did a bunch of the gods for Smite. Good ones. So I would be walking past Trickolo, heading straight to her booth. Oh. Her. <laughs> Sorry, Trickolo. I'd be giving her the blue steel. <laughs> she's cutie she's yeah, so cutie. Uh, what do you guys think they're gonna show over there i i'm not sure i'm sure they'll show off far more voice lines since it's trickolo that's going to be the one there by the way he provided his twit his twitter i'll try and get that and link that in the uh 
comments below but he said that he's going to be releasing a few more voice lines leading up to the uh to the con i don't know what else they'll show i'm sure it'll be some cool stuff if they're going to go to like a con like this then they're going to want to bring mm -hmm. some ammo yeah. with them to get people yeah that's from, what i was thinking you know definitely maybe they'll um record and and put something on their youtube that would be really cool so that everybody it's can kind neat. of experience it so oh yeah if you guys hadn't great. thought of that yet you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> save you check uh, to mandy they'll, they'll finally show the overseer class i don't Ooh, think so i don't think that'd so be cool. <laughs> maybe a little teaser if you guys are little... listening <laughs> No, I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think they're going to have the overseers in the alpha, unfortunately. So we're going to have to oh, wait. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah. We'll have to wait for that one. And uh, moving on to Visionary Games with Project Phoenix Rising, uh, they said, uh, "I asked them about the progress on their the blah the, 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 blah 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 the progress <laughs> on their one lane expo map. If you don't know, they they are still doing the three lane." 5v5 map but they kind of plan to do a proof of concept on a one lane sort of aram map so that should be pretty cool stuff for um for everybody and they said that it's going really well hopefully we'll get to see that sometime soon yeah definitely i can't wait to see more from them and you know see maybe some uh some more news on when when we can look at an alpha that would be great um i'm just happy that we're you know hearing from them again and that they say that progress is going well that's awesome yep. good to hear yeah it's really good to hear from them they're the ones if i'm not mistaken that took a a hit in their development they had like a lot of cut from the yeah staff. back in november they had like if a not mistaken, yeah yeah so it's really good and i'm excited to check it out i mean i smite has a one lane map i joust mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to check it out maybe it's something like that that'd be fun yeah their concepts are cool too their yeah they could concepts. just they could just yeah. keep that that one lane expo as like a uh just like an extra a map that you mm -hmm. can play on. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I think that would be a wonderful yeah, idea. Exactly. Like a joust map. That'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of joust maps, uh, Moody keyed me in on Paragon demo. I don't know if you guys have heard about it yet, but it's a uh, kind of a cool thing. It's a lot like overthrow. It's somebody, it's not going to be, you know, a full game. So we're probably not going to track it on the show, but it is a cool little project. It's a, it's a one lane, a Ram using the uh, uh, Paragon heroes. Some guy named Dan is doing it as a school project. So it's, not going to be making any money off of it, but you can get in there and play around on your heroes. It's not perfect, of course. I mean, who would expect it to be perfect? But mm -hmm. it does look pretty cool. Um, I'll be hooking that up and playing later on. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, I'll also provide links to to that down in the comments below. And thank you, Moody, for letting me know about, about that particular project. Yeah, no problem at all. I, I thought it looked neat. I thought it looked neat and not too polished, but uh, it ran. You're able to shoot. Yeah, it's just, one, it's just one dude. It's just, just like Rocket Mania. Was and you have all the heroes. Right? You're able to play all the heroes. You, they even had, I think they had Boris on there. <gasps> oh, did he have Whoa. Boris? That's awesome. I, I thought that was really neat, yeah. Very cool. I wonder if he used my um, ability set for <laughs> Boris. <laughs> Let's all hope, honestly. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> I <laughs> if you <laughs> if you guys uh, if you guys are interested in learning any more about any of these games, I'll have as many of their social links as I can linked down in the video description below. Go check them out, especially the Discord's great place to get some information. Let's move on now to the poll results. Not a big change as always because there hasn't been a lot of big news coming out. But uh, you know, last week we had Core at sixty eight, Predecessor at six, Ethereal at eight, Phoenix Rising at two, all of the above at seventeen. This week, we got Core at 66, Predecessor at 7, Ethereal at 7, Phoenix Rising at 2, and all of the above at 18. So, not a lot of variance, didn't expect a lot of variance, and um, that's about all I've got to say about that. So, let's uh, let's move on to Tech Time. What we're going to be doing with Tech Time now, um, we're going to go through from the very beginning and show you guys how to get the Paragon assets, load them into the Unreal Engine, and mess around with them on your own a lot of people always say i wish i could just i wish i could just get on aurora and just run around on my own little map well we're going to show you how you could do that how you could design your own map and get aurora with all of our abilities loaded up and running around and uh this week we're going to start small i didn't have ruba with me but i do know a little bit about how to how to get things going with the unreal engine so let's uh let's go ahead and get into tech time hello everyone and welcome back to tech time to mess around with the Paragon assets, you first need to download the Unreal Engine. Open up the Epic Launcher, go to the Unreal Engine, and install from the top right. 
I already have it installed, but you'll be asked if you're using it for business or personal or education or something like that. Just let them know that you're using it just to muck around. Once you launch the engine, you'll have to create a new project. There are several options available here, but we're going to pick a third person project to simulate Paragon. And there we have our third person project. You can name it whatever you want. We don't have any Paragon assets for this though, so we need to go back into the uh, launcher. Go to the Marketplace tab and type Paragon into the search bar. This will bring up all the Paragon assets. I have most of these already, but I don't have Yin, so let's go ahead and buy her. She's free, so you just need to check out and you, you have her. Add her into the project, we need to go to the Library tab. Find Yin. Click on Add to Project and select our third person project. Now she'll download into the project. Once that's done, head back to the engine, go to Content, click on the folder marked Paragon Yin, open Characters then Heroes, Yin, and now we have some options to add to the project. I'm going to add the Yin player character. Wait for the shaders to load. Now we have Yin as an actor in our project, but I want to be able to control her instead of this mannequin. So what I'll do is apply this Yin animation blueprint to the mannequin. Let's put a, uh, let's put a skin on her since it's asking for an option. And now we can move around with Yin. I mean, she isn't animated at all. She's just kind of standing there sliding around. We can jump at least. But there we go. We at least have a small area loaded up with a Yin that we can control. Next step is beyond my capabilities. So we'll bring Ruba in next time and show me how to make it look like she's running around instead of just sliding. Hope you guys enjoyed Tech Time. I hope you learned a little something something, but uh, we're going to move right on now into the topic for discussion for this week, which is how much do the hero kits need to change? Now, what I'm talking about is Omega Studios and MetaBuff have, you know, decided to change up the hero kits a little bit. Um, for example, with Obeda in their alpha, Alacrity on Muriel, would, instead of applying a slow, would give you a little bit of a knock up. And, um, the Murdoch, they completely rewound his kit to the legacy style kit for Murdoch. And then for a meta buff, they, you know, one of the things I know that they were toying around with was having Howitzer able to target his, the first barrage of rockets on the ground, then fly up and launch his final rocket. So it doesn't all just hit in the same area. He has a little bit more control over it. But the thing is, how much can you change the hero kits before these heroes lose their identity and lose their place in the game. How much is too much? So that is the topic for discussion for today. And uh, Moody, do you got anything to say on this? Um, I'm a little on the fence. I kind of, like, I, we talked about this. I like Murdoch's old passives. I mean, uh, mm. the Hot Pursuit. I really dig that. I just don't want him to change too much. Because then these heroes are going to stop feeling like the heroes that were coming. The reason we're coming back to the game. Mm. I right. don't want him to change too much. I don't want him to... Some heroes are perfectly fine. I mean, I guess Murdoch, what, they, did they change it back to his old uh, trap yep, static, pushback? Static trap yeah. pushback. I mean, that's not bad. Buckshot. I just hope they don't start trying to make their own kits or just switch it up too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I definitely agree 100%. I like the little changes that we've either seen or heard talked about with um, Core and Omeda. Uh, well, core and uh, <laughs> predecessor. Um, so I like the little t the little changes they've they've talked about or implemented. That's fine. Um, there are characters like Wukong that I think need to be looked at um, as well. But but still don't want to see too much too much change uh, mm -hmm. done. So definitely. Um, basically, like Moody said, we are coming back because we love these heroes so mm -hmm. much. There was nothing. I shouldn't say nothing wrong. There was balance issues, but you know, the for the most part, you really could find a character that you really just clicked with and, you know, excelled at. So you don't we don't want to see too much change, definitely. Um I I agree. I think Moody hit hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Even a little bit of change to a hero can completely um ruin him. 
Yeah, well, it can ruin what their purpose was in the game. Each hero True. had a bit of a niche. We talked about yesterday when we recorded this before, and then we're recording this again, talked about Sparrow a little bit. If you gave Sparrow an escape, she loses her identity. That's the word I was looking for, identity. Her identity as being, like, the carry that has to be babied extra special in the early game, but comes on super strong in the late game. If you give her an escape, then there's no drawbacks to Sparrow whatsoever. So right. even something small as changing one ability like that could completely ruin a hero's identity. They need to be very careful when they make when they're making these changes to the kits. Absolutely, I agree. But yeah, like you said so far, everything I've seen, I've been cool with. Um, I know Moody, you were a fan of the uh, new Murdoch. I was not at all. I didn't like. I didn't like mm -hmm. all the passives. I mean, Hopper Suit was kind of cool, I guess. But that could I thought be. It was real cool. You know, in Legacy, each hero had a passive on top of their other abilities. Maybe Hot Pursuit right. could just be his passive for uh, Core yeah. and Predecessor. That would be kind of cool. I thought it fit uh, very good for uh, Carrie. Because when mm -hmm. you get him, what was it? Uh, you got him half health, below half health. And then he would start, uh, he would get increased movement speed, right? Right. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I thought that was a perfect passive for a Carrie. So, it's a good yeah. one. Yeah. I don't know. I think I anything, it, though, people... anything that encourages my carry to chase pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an excellent point. But yeah, I definitely. I be that type of carry where I was like, you know, got hungry, got hungry for that kill. <laughs> I get it though. People miss the static trap, push them into the static trap. It was a thing. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. fun um, yeah. playing with, um, cause I didn't play a lot of Murdoch uh, in my Paragon days, but whenever I messed around in the alpha for predecessor, I got to play him and I got to say those traps were fun. It was really satisfying when someone would step in one, you're like, yes. <laughs> so, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So I like, uh, I like, you know, I like the idea of, like you said, just having a passive on top of all their other gonna do. And then, you know, that way you maybe get the best of both worlds. Yep. Yeah, I used to love stealing kills with uh, Murdoch, Zolp. <laughs> oh, Whip, yeah. Whip out the long dog. Whip out the long dog. Man, the first time that happened to me, I was, like, bamboozled. I was like, what? Where? How? Like the first time you got hit or the first time somebody stole your kill with it? No, the first time I got killed with it because I was like, huh? Like, <laughs> what, when, where, why? Like, I don't understand what just happened to me. Oh, it always I would do it. I would tell my friends that uh, my finger slipped. Uh, <laughs> my finger slipped. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry. I, I used to troll Murdoch. <laughs> you were securing the kills. You weren't stealing. You were securing them. Securing the kills. There's a difference. It always sucked, too, when like you saved your core and it was at 1%. And you're like, oh, thank God. They're like, oh, wait, they got a Murdoch. <laughs> we're done. We're done anyway. <laughs> Bang, there it goes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> moving on to community suggestions what i asked from you guys last week was to give me some mount ideas especially if they could go along with the hero and uh so we got some pretty good ones we got future doc with a giant banana for wukong uh my idea for the banana is that it have human legs <laughs> Like hairy human legs too on the side of the banana. I think that would be absolutely awesome. Barefoot as well. So Barefoot creepy. human legs on the giant banana. That's what I want for Wukong. Oh my god. And then um Slight Drizzle. Uh he was saying a uh, wind wind for Yin, but not like Nimbus, not like a cloud that she flies on, but like the wind from her ultimate. So it would be kind of like uh, Ang from Avatar, whenever he would float around a little ball of air. I think that's a great idea for Yin. And great then, uh, idea and excellent reference. <laughs> <laughs> then Demon Face 96, he was talking about Gideon could be mounted onto his disc, you know, that disc that he keeps on his back and then uses to do Gideon stuff. I think that's a cool <laughs> idea. I mean, that'd yeah, be I love tribal that animation. I can see that. Yeah, that I can see it kind of just like shifting into travel mode and him like taking off. That would be. Like, really cool. That was a really good suggestion. Yeah. Fits Gideon perfect. Absolutely. The Noob Sock, this one doesn't really go with any heroes, but a Marty McFly hoverboard. I think every game needs a hoverboard. At least a hero yes. that rides around on a hoverboard. Yeah. Maybe, um, oh, what's his face? Uh, Tom Selleck. <laughs> no, uh, the Paragon hero. Um, the Wraith, maybe he could have a hoverboard. He he would be. Oh, good. you think he's a hoverboard? Yeah, think he's yeah, the hoverboard he guy. <laughs> yeah, he's the hoverboard guy, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 
Blaine Fiasco had a land shark, which is uh, good. <laughs> Mandy brought up a picture of a. Uh, you picked that picture up again, Mandy. I am. Of the land I am. shark. I am. Because uh, I had to Google what is a land shark because I I didn't know and I still have not seen the um the reference. You, from, you haven't seen you the old Saturday Night Live. No, I have not. Land, land but shark. it doesn't matter because this is what it needs to be. This is a shark with horse legs, <laughs> and that is what I want in a mount. That is all I could ever ask oh, for in a mount. It's beautiful. It, it, isn't it? It's if it majestic. had a freaking laser Gorgeous. beam on its head, it would be even oh, better. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but no, before we get too far into this, no, none of the Paragon remakes are going to put mounts on their, <laughs> for their characters. <laughs> Ethereal, however, which is its own thing. They are going to have mounts, and they are going to have uh, just it's just going to be horses at first. But um, it's not going to be like the old Paragon travel mode where you get stunned or, or rooted or slowed whenever you're coming out of your your um, travel mode animation. It's just going to be you you know spin up a little bit, mount up, take off, and then if you get hit or if you perform an action while you're on the mount, the mount just goes away and it's you're back to regular normal movement speed. So that'll deal with a lot of the issues that Paragon had. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for pretty ponies. As always, you are. As always. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, moving. I think it's oh, a cool go ahead. Idea. Yeah, I think it's a really cool idea. I mean, Paladins does it. It works. Yeah. Yeah, and especially for a map of that size, I mm -hmm. think it's going to be very helpful. So. Yeah, I think it's a good definitely idea. cool. I wonder if the Sky Slayers will have Pegasi. Pegasuses. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That'd be cool. Yeah. How do you pluralize Pegasus? Is it Pegasi? I think Pegasi is one Pegasus. Peg Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pegasit. So. Pe Pegasusin. Pe Pegasusin. I'm pretty sure it's Pegasusin. In the woodnesses. <laughs> in the woodnesses. <laughs> Many moosin in the woodnesses. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, let's move on to the community builder. I can't believe you got that, Mandy. Good. Heck yeah, Brian Good Regan. Good shit, Brian Regan. One of my favorite comedians of all time. He's the best. <laughs> then, uh, the community builder this week is going to be Tiger.exe. You see him in the comments a lot. He's uh, been one of my subscribers for a long time. He's making some Paragon videos. Go check him out. Um, if you like it, stick around. You know, that's all I'm asking is that you go take a look and give him some support. And uh, I think that is going to about wrap up the show. Mandy, you got any plugs? I do. Um, I just want to encourage everybody to check out my twitch um i actually just renamed it today so it's now mandy mal games before it was just mandy mal but it's just mandy mal games like everything my instagram my um youtube so I'm a little bit easier to find everything's cohesive but um i'm streaming a lot more on twitch these days than i am on youtube just because i've had some technical issues with youtube um but i do plan to finish out my until dawn series on uh youtube and i've been streaming those because that's really fun to kind of interact interact with everybody as I'm getting my butt scared. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun <laughs> so, watch for sure. It's a fun watch. It's a, it's a fun play. So I definitely encourage everybody <laughs> to check it out. I just wish I had, I'm probably going to start announcing on my Instagram stories when I stream. So that's going to be the best place to, um, to go and give me a follow there. And then that way you will know when I'm going to stream and you can come say hi and hang out. I would love to have you. Awesome. And Moody, do you got anything to plug? No, no plugs. Just happy to be here. And uh, thank you guys for having me on. You guys are really cool. Appreciate yeah, it. we're happy to have you. You were a so... very fun guest. Thanks for uh, <laughs> coming and doing it again because I fucked it up <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Uh, for me, um, Corecast, the actual podcast I do with Nato Cristo, that is now a uh, that's now available on iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, Google Play. So I'll put the links down in the uh, description if you want to check out the uh, Corecast. But um, I think that's going to be it. I appreciate everybody coming out. Let's all keep our ears to the ground. Let's keep our eyes on that Discord. If you have any updates that you think I didn't see or didn't notice. Hit me up and let me know. Let's all work together on this to keep the community as updated as possible. But for now, this is the entire For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Mangoo.